Hi, I'm Adam and this is the second video in a series where we're looking at designing and making our own PCB for the Commodore 64. In the last video we drew out the schematic. In this video we'll be assigning footprints for these components along with creating a custom footprint for this edge connector. We'll then lay out the PCB and finally export the Gerbers for manufacture. I'll also walk you through how to upload the Gerber files to PCBWay.com and place an order. And talking of PCBWay.com who've sponsored this video, let's take a look at some of the services they offer right now. <laughs> Okay, so let's jump into where we left off in the last video. Open up KiCad, open up your schematic, and we're good to go. From within your schematic, click the Assign PCB Footprint button. This can take some time to open. The area in the center shows all of the components in our schematic. We'll start with the capacitor and work our way down the list. The left hand column lists all of the footprint libraries. I'm going to choose a through hole capacitor, meaning that the legs will be inserted through the holes in the PCB and soldered on the rear of the board. Then on the right hand side we have a list of footprints to choose from. The capacitor I'm going to use is a ceramic capacitor and the size of the leg spacing is 2.5mm. We can see what this looks like by right clicking it and selecting view footprint. I'm going to zoom in and centre the cursor on this pad. Now watch the coordinates at the bottom of the screen when I press the spacebar. See how they reset to zero. Now when I move the cursor to the other pad we can see that the spacing is 2.54mm. You can also view a 3D render of the component by clicking this button. OK, so let's close both the render and the footprint. To assign this footprint, double click it. Now we need to assign a suitable footprint to the diodes. So in the footprint libraries, look for diode underscore THT. And over in the footprints column, look for a suitable footprint. This looks good, it's a DO35 package with a pad spacing of 10.16mm. I'll take a quick look at the footprint and just double check it. Double click that footprint twice to accept it for both of the diodes. Next we have the jumpers, you'll find these under the connector pin header libraries and the standard pitch for these is 2.54mm. Over in the footprints column we need to choose this one which is one row times three with a pad pitch of 2.54 millimeters and I want to use vertical jumpers. So let's take a look at the footprint and view it in 3D. These look good. When we make the cartridge, we'll use a small jumper to make the required selection of the required ROM image. Okay, close the 3D render and close the footprint. Double click the footprint twice to assign it to both J1 and J2. Next is the resistor, so from the libraries select resistor underscore THT as we want a through hole resistor. Then in the footprint column select the axial resistor with length 6.3mm and diameter 2.5mm and pad pitch of 10.16mm. Let's take a quick look at the footprint to confirm it is the correct one. This is it in 3D. and the distance between the pads is correct. So close these and then double click the footprint to assign it. I already have a footprint assigned to the switch I used. If you don't, you'll find a six millimeter by six millimeter push button switch in the button underscore switch underscore THT footprint libraries. The footprint for the EEPROM is already selected, but if yours isn't, you'll need to find a suitable DIP28 package with a width of 15.24 millimeters. Take a look in the package underscore DIP footprint libraries for this. The last footprint to assign is the edge connector of the cartridge itself. Since there is no ready made footprint available for this, we will need to create a custom one ourselves. Before we do this, ensure that you click the apply and save button, then click OK. Right, 
We are now ready to create the edge connector footprint, so click the footprint editor button. You'll need to create a library to save your edge connector footprint, just like we did when creating the custom symbol in the schematic. I've already created mine and I called it mylib. To create a library, select file and then new library. Just like in the last video, you'll need to decide whether to make this a global or project only library. After you've created your library, locate it in the list and then right click it and select new footprint. Assign a suitable name for the footprint, so I'll call mine C64 Cart Edge. The first thing I'm going to do is draw out a box to use as a kind of guide. So let's select the drawing user layer and in KiCad 6 this is called user drawings. Then select the line tool and change the grid snap to 1.27mm. Then when you zoom in to wherever you're going to start the line, press the spacebar to reset the coordinates to zero. I'm going to make this box 8.9mm by 58.42mm. Right, this box will act as a guide to help us lay out the footprint and the user drawings don't show up on the final manufactured PCB. I want to move this text. Remember that before attempting to move the text, you need to either click the Select Items button or hit the Escape key a couple of times on your keyboard. Then with your cursor over the text, press the M key and move it to the desired location and then left click. I'm going to save this before moving on. The connectors are going to be pads so click on the pad button and then click anywhere in the footprint to place the pad. Then we need to set the size of the pad accordingly, so right click the pad and select properties. Since the pad is going to sit on top of the PCB and will not be connected to the underside, the pad type should be set to SMD. Then set size X to 1.524 mm and size Y to 8 mm. Now we've got something that resembles a single connection on the edge connector, so click the OK button. Then position the pad at the bottom of the box like this and the centre of the pad should be 2.54 mm from the edge of the box. To check this, I'll position my cursor at the edge of the box and press the spacebar to reset the coordinates. Now, when I move the cursor to the centre of the pad, I can check the distance and yes, that's 2.54 millimeters. A tip here, if you are unable to get exactly 2.54 millimeters, is to check the grid size that you are using. I'm using 1.27 millimeters, and 2.54 millimeters is divisible by this without any remainders. Now, it's just a case of placing all 22 pads with a center distance from each other of 2.54 millimeters. The numbers that you can see on the pads directly correspond to the symbol of the edge connector that we created in the last video. Great, all 22 pads are in place, so let's check the distance from the center of pad 22 to the edge of the box. So, reset to zero with the spacebar, and great, that's 2.54 millimeters. Let's save this before continuing. I'm going to have a quick look in the 3D viewer to see what it looks like. Ignore the bit of board below the pads, as this won't be there on the final manufactured PCB. This bit along here will be the edge. At the moment we can see the solder mask in between the pads, so I'm going to get rid of this next. We get rid of the solder mask by drawing with the polygon tool while having the front mask layer selected. So draw out a rectangle covering the pads and the entire width of the box that we drew as a guide. Now when we look at the image in 3D, notice how the solder mask is excluded from the area we just marked out. The edge of the PCB is going to be right here, so there will be nothing below this part. Back in the footprint layout, I'm going to select the front copper layer to get a better view. Right, looks good, so let's save before moving on. 
Next, we need to add the edge connector connections on the underside of the PCB. To help us see what we are doing while we're working on the rear of the PCB, we can turn off the front copper, front mask and front paste layers. As we need to place pads on the rear of the board, select the back copper layer and add a pad. We don't see the pad we've just added and I realise that's because it's been added to the top layer of the board, so I'm going to turn on the top layer again. Right, there it is. Let's select it. And it's this one, pad 23. Now right click it and select properties or press the E key. Here we can change the layer of the board to back copper. Now I need back mask, back paste and uncheck the front paste and front mask. And if you cast your mind back to when we made the symbol for the edge connector, the bottom side didn't use numbers but used letters instead. So change the pad number to letter A and click OK. Brilliant, let's turn off the front layer again and add the remaining pads. Don't worry about naming it yet, we'll change this after we've added all of the pads. Now update the pin numbers to match what we did on the symbol in the last video. The link to the wiki showing the cartridge port is in the description. Fantastic, all 22 pads in place. I'm going to double check the distances 2.54mm from the edge to the centre of this pad. It is. And 2.54mm from here to the centre of the next pad. It is. Great. Next we need to select the back mask layer and using the polygon tool repeat what we did on the front layer. Now I'm going to enable all of the layers. Let's take a quick look in 3D. So now we can see that the edge connector on the front and rear of the board has no solder mask in between the pads. Fantastic. Don't worry about this bit of board underneath the pads as it won't be on the final PCB. We now have our custom edge connector footprint and the pads have been labelled the same as the symbol so they will tie up correctly when we associate this to the edge connector symbol. Before we save it, I'm just going to move this text to the centre. Actually, I think I'll leave ref down in the lower left corner and choose not to have it displayed on the PCB. So select his properties and change the layer to drawings user. This way we will still see the text when laying out the PCB but it won't be printed on the silk screen of the PCB during manufacture. OK, the custom footprint is done. Save it and close it. Now head back into the footprint assignment tool and we need to assign the custom footprint we just made to the C64 cartridge port. In the centre part, select the C64 cart port. Over on the left hand side, select the library that you created. So for me, that was my lib. And then over on the right hand side, select your custom footprint that you just made. So for me, that's C64 underscore cart underscore edge and then double click it. Fantastic, we've now got all footprints assigned to all of our components and we're now ready to start laying out the PCB. Let's export the netlist ready to import into the PCB layout. The netlist contains all of the electrical connections and footprint details. So in KiCad 5.1, which is what I'm using, click the netlist export button. If you are using KiCad 6, you can select file, export, netlist, then click generate netlist. Save the netlist in the project folder. You'll see that it has the extension .net. Then, back in the main project overview, open the blank PCB layout. To import the netlist, click the load netlist button. And again, if you're using KiCad 6, you can do this by selecting file, import, netlist. Then browse to the location of the netlist that we just exported, select it and click open. Then click update PCB. Here you can see all of the components have been imported. Place them somewhere on the page by left clicking. The white lines linking the components are called a rat's nest and they show us the electrical connections between the components. 
The board setup button allows you to specify default parameters for your project. For example, you might want to make the power tracks wider. It's not really necessary for this project, but it's nice to see how. To do this, select design rules and net classes. Here you see the default track details such as minimum clearance, track width, etc. Leaving this default is fine for manufacturer at pcbway.com. I'm going to click the add button and create a new net class and call it power. And in this example, I'll make the width 0.4 millimeters and the clearance 0.25 millimeters. Then down here, scroll down to ground and set the net class to power and do the same for VCC. And click OK. Before I start arranging the components, we need to think about the PCB size. There is a specific requirement that the width of this board should not be more than 58.4 mm or it will not fit into the edge connector of the Commodore 64. So where you have projects like this that have specific size restrictions, it's always a good idea to draw out the edge of the PCB first. To do this, select the Edge Cuts layer and the Line tool. Now, I'm going to go for a grid size of 0.254 mm. Zero the coordinates with the spacebar and start drawing a line. The width of the cartridge should be 58.4 mm. So here we have 58.42 mm and that will do. So that's how wide the cartridge should be. Now we need to draw the vertical line. I'm going to make it around 50 mm long. You can go longer as there isn't a restriction here, although we only have a few components to place, so it doesn't have to be a massive board. There, 50.54 mm, that will do nicely. So now another line back across to the zero position for DX. And now it's just a case of completing the box by coming back down here to the bottom. OK, so that's going to be the PCB size of our cartridge and we'll need to arrange all of these components to fit into this area. So let's take a look in 3D. So here you can see our cartridge PCB and all of the components. I'm going to round the corners of the PCB off a little as I think it gives a nicer look. To do this, select the arc button. Now, I always forget which way to draw with this. Is it clockwise or counterclockwise? So let's take a quick look. I'll try clockwise first. Nope, that was wrong. It's anti-clockwise. Right, let's place the cursor in the corner and zero off the coordinates, and then come in by 1.27mm for both DX and DY, and then draw an arc. Then select each line in turn and adjust the length like this. Then repeat for the three remaining corners. Let's take a quick look in 3D. Our PCB now has slightly rounded corners which I think makes it look a little nicer. I'm going to add a hole in this PCB so if I ever decide to print a case for the PCB I can fix it in place with a screw. So still with the edge cut layer selected click the circle button then in the bottom left hand corner reset the coordinates with the spacebar. Then I'm going to come across to the center of the board which is 29.21 millimeters and go up to 42.418 mm. If you already have a specific case in mind that you wish to use, then measure the distance for the center of this hole that you need accordingly. Time for a quick check in 3D. Looking good. I'm going to adjust the diameter of the hole to 4.5 mm, so open its properties and set the radius to 2.25 mm. Time to position the components. Let's start with the edge connector. Select it and position its lower left corner at coordinate 00. And now if you take a look in 3D, 
We have a perfect edge connector with no solder mask around it and it's aligned perfectly with the edge of the board. Nice. Now it's really beginning to look like an actual games cartridge. Brilliant. Let's move the EEPROM next. Rotate it with the R key. But don't worry too much about the exact position on the board just yet. Next, the reset button and I'll pop it at the top right. The capacitor needs to go next to the EEPROM. The two jumpers that are used to select the ROM image can go up in the top left corner. The two diodes and resistor can all be lined up neatly like this. A tip with the diodes is to make sure that they are orientated the same way around on the PCB. This will make assembly easier and less chance of one being inserted the wrong way round. I'm going to move these over a bit and move these down a bit. Let's move the resistor and diodes over a bit and then the jumpers down slightly. Before we worry about the exact positioning and alignment of everything, let's take a quick look in 3D. Wow, this is looking good. Here we've got the basics of the cartridge layout almost done. Next, make any adjustments to the component position until you are happy with the way that they look. Right, I'm happy with where my components are. We are now ready to start laying out the tracks of the PCB. Since this is a two layer PCB, we will have tracks on both the top and the bottom of the board. I'm going to start off on the bottom layer. So with back copper selected, click the root tracks button. We use the rat's nest as a visual indication of where the electrical connections need to go. It's also worth pointing out that KiCad will prevent you from connecting components together that should not be connected. I'm going to start by connecting this ground pin on the EEPROM to the ground pad on the edge connector. Drawing the track is very much like drawing the wires in the schematic. Position the cursor where you want to start, left click, draw, and then left click on the pad to end the line. Next we see that the reset switch also connects to ground, so let's move on to that. Notice the grey area either side of the ground track as I draw it. This is the clearance width as defined in the net class. This prevents the track touching components pads and other tracks that it shouldn't. Before I make the connections from the resistor and diodes, I'm going to align them. To do this, select them all and then right click and select Align Distribute and then Align to Middle. It's worth pointing out that you can distribute vertically as well. Next, continue to connect the components using both the front and rear copper layers. Laying the tracks out manually like this is very much trial and error, and you'll find that you may need to delete tracks and reroute them. There is a link in the description down below where you can download an image of my routed tracks if you wish to copy them. Remember that tracks on the same layer of the board can't cross. If you need to cross over tracks, then they must be on different layers of the board. I'll speed up the track routing section of this video and slow it down in a little while to show you how to link between the board layers using a via. When you want to jump onto another layer such as here, you can place a via which is a copper plated hole that connects this track to the track on the other side of the board. Now when I switch to the front copper track, I can continue to draw from the via to the pad on the edge connector.
Now I've got my PCB laid out, let's take a look in 3D. Great, the board is looking almost complete. Next, we'll add a copper fill area to both the top and bottom of the board and we'll connect the fill area to ground. Click the Filled Zone button and select the back copper layer. Start in one of the top corners and it doesn't matter if you are slightly off the edge of the curved corner. When you click, you'll be prompted to choose which net name the copper fill should be connected to and in this case I'll select ground. Then we can specify the minimum clearance, so I'm going to take this down a little bit to 0.3 and click OK. Now draw out a box covering the entire cartridge, but be careful not to cover the edge connector. Now the box is complete, notice the hatch lines around the edge of the shape. This indicates that this area is actually a solid region of copper. Now when we check in 3D, on the rear of the board you can see the copper filled area. The clearance gap between this filled zone and any tracks that aren't ground is 0.3mm as that's what I specified the clearance to be. Let's do the same on the top of the board. So select the front copper layer and repeat. Let's take another quick look in 3D. This is almost looking like a finished board. Now we need to sort out the silk screen and any additional text. To help with assembly, I'm going to add the component values to the silk screen and place the component value inside the outline of the component. Let's start with the resistor. Firstly, select the 10K and move it to the center of the resistor and then bring up the text properties by pressing E on your keyboard. The 10K text is currently on the F fab layer, which doesn't get printed on the board. So let's fix that by changing the layer to front silk screen. Do the same for any other component where you want to display the value on the board's silk screen and adjust the text width and height accordingly. Let's check in the 3D viewer. I'm going to use the area that is in between the jumpers and the hole to put a table showing the various jumper configurations. To do this, click the text button and add the following text onto the board that I've overlaid onto the video. Enter each bit of text separately as we'll need to be able to move each individual section when aligning them in a little while. Then select each column at a time and distribute the text to the middle. Now we'll look at getting each row level. Okay. 
To help us with that and to make it look more like a table, we'll add some lines. So with the front silk screen layer selected, draw a horizontal line under the first row. Next, draw a vertical line between each column. Then draw the remaining horizontal lines ensuring the same distance between each one. Don't forget that you can reset the coordinates with the spacebar to help you measure out distance. Right, now we've got the table laid out, move each number and letter so that they are positioned in the centre of each box vertically. Try not to move them horizontally as we've already centred them this way. Finally, I'm going to make the headings in the table a little larger by editing the text properties so that the width and height are 1.2mm and the thickness is 0.2mm. Now switch to the 3D view and check that you are happy with the positioning of the table. If not, select it and move it accordingly. OK, so I'm happy with that now. I want to add a Wii logo, which is the picture of the bin with the cross through it, to show that this board should not be thrown in the bin when it reaches the end of its life, but should be recycled instead. To add it, click the Add Footprint button and either browse for or search for the Wii logo. I'm going to add this one that is 56 by 8 millimeters, but there are other sizes if you prefer. I want this to go on the rear of the board. To move it to the rear silkscreen layer, select it, edit its properties by pressing E, and then change the board side drop down to back and click OK. Rotate with the R key, and then move it to the desired position of the PCB. So I'm going to move it to somewhere around here. There, that will do. To see what that looks like, jump back into the 3D view and spin the board around. Nice. Next, I want to add some text to the front of the board to say what this PCB is and also show my web address. So select the text tool and ensure that the front silk screen layer is selected. This is a Commodore 64 16K cartridge. And again, this is a little trial and error with the positioning and size. Just adjust until you are happy with the way it looks. I think it would look better if I moved the text down and placed the web address on the top. Next we need to add a high, low and common label to the jumpers so that the user knows what they are set to. Right, I think this is looking pretty good now but I've just noticed that the reset button doesn't say reset so let's add that now. Fantastic, it looks done. Don't forget to run the design rules check before moving on. This checks that all of the electrical connections have been made and warns of any errors. Great, no errors. Now all we need to do is export the Gerber files for manufacture. To do this, click the plot button. The plot format we need is Gerber. You'll need to include these layers and also ensure that your general options match mine. Under Gerber options, I'm also going to select Use Protel File Name Extensions. Choose an output directory where the Gerber files should be saved. I'm going to create a folder called Gerber 
within my project folder and select that. Click the plot button to export the files. You can check the output by viewing the folder that you selected as the output directory. And here we see the files for each layer on the board, copper, silkscreen, mask, etc. Okay, back to KiCad, and we need to export a drill file so that the manufacturer knows where to drill the holes on the board. To do this, click the Generate Drill Files button. Make sure the output folder is the same as before, so here you can see mine is still the Gerber folder. Then, make sure you have the same settings as me and click the Generate Drill File button. And back in the Gerber folder, you can see the two drill files with the extension DRL. When you come to upload the Gerber files to PCBWay.com, they will all need to be in a single zip file, so zip them up and give the file a suitable name. I'm going with 16 kcart underscore gerber.zip. To manufacture, head on over to PCBWay.com and select PCB Instant Quote. And then click Quick Order PCB. Click Add Gerber File. Browse to the zip file that we just created and click Open. The file is then uploaded and read by PCBWay.com. It has been correctly identified as a two layer PCB of size 58.4 by 50.5 millimeters. The two layers refer to the number of copper layers. Let's scroll down a little. The board type can be left to single pieces. This way, when we receive the order, we'll receive individual PCBs. We have one design. This is the size of the PCB and here you can choose the quantity. Five is the minimum. The number of layers has already been detected correctly from our Gerber files. Here you select the material that the PCB should be manufactured from. I'm leaving it set to the standard FR4. And this is the temperature range. The higher the TG number, the better. The standard thickness is 1.6 millimeters, which is what I'm going to leave this set to. The minimum track spacing and hole size can be left as it is, as our design meets these requirements. Next, you can choose the color of the PCB, and I'm going to go with blue and the silkscreen color that I want is white as I think this will be easier to read on a blue background. And for the finish, I want lead free. Via process can be left to tenting vias, which means the via holes will be covered with the solder mask. The lowest weighting of copper is fine for what we are doing. I'm not going to remove the production number that PCBWay will add to the silkscreen, but if you want to do this, select this option. Okay, next, Let's select the shipping, so I'm in the UK, depending on how quickly your board needs to arrive, there are a range of options. I generally use DHL, DDP or PCBWay Express IP. Let's just have a quick play with the quantity and see how the prices are affected. Wow, that's unexpected. Changing the quantity to 10 didn't affect the price at all. Going to 15 is almost 8 US dollars more. And going to 20 only raises the price by an additional 2 US dollars. Have a play with the quantity and work out which is most cost effective for you. I'm going to order 10. Save to cart and then run through the checkout process. You'll need to create an account and there is usually an offer for your first order. I'm so excited for these boards to arrive and to make it. Join me in the next video where I'll do exactly that.